Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program. And here I've got a Patek Philippe catalogue brochure from 1990. And uh, this is 23 years ago and it's a little fold-out uh, catalogue. And it's great because it gives us a snippet of the entire Patek range at the time. And 1990 is not that long ago. That's the year I got my first luxury, my first true luxury watch, which was a Rolex Explorer 1. And uh, I paid for that piece $1,575. As a Rolex Explorer 1 plastic 1016. L serial number. What a magnificent piece. But uh, it's really fascinating. This is this is a cat, Patek catalogue, so this is really upmarket. And uh, the first thing that hits you is the sizes are a hell of a lot smaller. Yes, they've got a couple Nautilus pieces there. One interesting thing I found is that the, they had a Nautilus with a white dial. And uh, that's right, yeah, the Nautilus in the 90s, you could get it with a white dial. That's not just a, a new thing. The uh, 5711, you, which is uh, a piece that they released just a couple years ago with the white dial. And uh, no, it was available a while ago. The other thing is, is that quartz was actually quite popular. It wasn't terminal. Quartz really now is, oh, it's like dog shit on your shoes. You just try and scrape it off. And uh, back then, a lot of people demanded quartz. And a, a luxury maker like Patek had to have quartz pieces if it wanted to remain in business. The other interesting thing is, is that you look at some of the the true, true classics in the range. And uh, one model that stands out a lot is the Patek 3919, which is the hobnail Calatrava with the Roman numerals and the sub-second at six. The second's at six. It's also using the Patek 215 movement. And I gotta say, this was actually my first Patek Philippe. And uh, I got one in nine, sorry, 2001. 2001, I got my first Patek. And uh, I sold it for personal reasons. I ran out of money. And uh, I gotta tell you the truth there, it's very, very fascinating. The uh, the interesting thing is, is that they, they had some, they had the Patek 3940, which is the perpetual calendar. And they had the Patek 3970, which is the perpetual calendar chronograph. So those are two very heavy hitting pieces. But, but, they didn't have a lot of smaller, you know, uh, simpler complications. That's, that's missing in this genre here. And uh, I, I got to say, that's, that's a sad thing. That's a really sad thing that... You know, back then they only had two, throw actually three, they had a, uh, a perpetual calendar on a bracelet. But they, they didn't have a lot of, um, they didn't have a lot of, you know, there was no annual calendars. There was no, there was no world times, absolutely no world times, which I think the world time was such a wonderful um, piece to have there. And it's been with us since 2000, but that's right. In 1990, there was no world time. Um, you know, in, in the catalogue, it wasn't a current model. There was the older world times, which, you know, they're legendary. But you look at the range. There was a lot more, the ellipse, that's that oval sort of a shape, the ellipse type shape. Um, it was quite popular. Now, that's that's really fallen out of flavour. And um, <clears throat> the ellipse itself there, I, I quite like the ellipse. I, I think the ellipse in modern times now it gets a bit of a a rough edge you know people people don't they say oh it's a dog it's this or that but i i remember going to hourglass at the gold coast and i saw an ellipse with a chocolate brown dial it was a i think it was an auto and uh I, it's a men's size one in yellow gold and i gotta say it was absolutely beautiful i just if you've got a few Pateks, sure, it wouldn't be your first Patek you buy, but it's so unusual. It's so, I think a lot of that 70s type of shape will come back in in fashion. It sort of has come back in, but the Ellipse came out in 1968. And uh, i got to tell you, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty amazing stuff. And um, I, I quite love it. 
I just I just love the the simplicity of it and uh, the the interesting thing is that there was no the closest thing thing to a 5107 that's my uh, Patek Calatrava was a 3998 that was sort of the closest thing and uh, a lot of these models here you can see where the basis comes from but they were certainly smaller 33 mil 34 mil that was cons that was the size that was the size and uh, you know I, I kind of um, I gotta be honest with you I'm kind of pleased the range has gotten bigger you know I, I I I don't subscribe to dress watches being over 40 mil I think that's getting ridiculous but 37 mil you know that's 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 not a bad size and uh, it's just it's really interesting to look at this range from 1990 and uh, it was quite there's a lot of development work Patek has put in you can see Patek has done a lot of work and uh, you know this was a a different age it's a different different range of watches for a different age and different things sold and you know the the, the high-end watch market was very different but uh, I gotta say there's some beautiful pieces here and uh, I'd, I'd still kill for a 3940. I think they're a beautiful perpetual calendar, cro you know, sorry, perpetual calendar is amazing. And the, the perpetual calendar chronograph is always just a, a you know, eye-watering piece. But um, just the standard perpetual calendar, I'd love to have. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you think of this brochure from 1990. See you later.